Hi, welcome to video 1. In this video, we are going to look at ionic compound and its physical properties. So, let's first look at the melting and boiling point of ionic compound. I believe that a lot of you all know that ionic compound have very high melting point and boiling point, And they are solid at room temperature and pressure. So, in an ionic compound, we say that it has a giant ionic uh, lattice. So, in this lattice, okay, the example that I drawn below, okay, the, the one that is just circled is your sodium plus. It's surrounded by many neighboring chloride ions. So, as they are having opposite charges, there's going to be very strong electrostatic forces of attraction. So when I'm trying to melt or boil this compound, I'm I'm going to I, I would have to break this very strong forces of attraction for this uh boiling or melting to take place. So therefore a large amount of energy is required and this result in it having a high melting point and boiling point. Okay. I think this one is uh nothing special. You have learned it ago in your O level. So just a recap for those who already know this. So next one, let's look at uh property of ionic solid being very hard and brittle. Okay, once again I will use the lattice structure to explain this. Okay. If I'm going to apply a stress, okay, you can look at the green color one. I can say that this is your chloride. The red color one is your sodium plus. Okay, chloride has a much larger ionic radii than your sodium plus. That's in your atomic structure, in case you forgotten. Okay, so after I apply the stress on it, okay, the two Cl minus are now already uh, on top of each other. Similarly for your two sodium plus. Okay, once I displace them, they are on top of each other, and then what will I experience? Okay, force or repulsion. Okay, so they will be repelled because they have the same charge. So when I apply a force, I will expect it to break apart very easily because after a while the ions are having the same charge on top of each other, they will repel and this crystal will fall apart. Okay, next let's look at solubility. Ionic compounds are very soluble in polar solvents but not very soluble in non-polar solvents. Okay, this is uh, just a general rule. Uh. I do not expect all ionic compounds to be soluble in polar solvent. Okay, so this is a generalization. Okay, not always true. So let's look at uh, some example of non-polar solvent for those people who do not know of any example okay one of them is your hexane the other one is your ccl4 okay ccl4 is your tetrachloromethane so this molecule okay has a tetrahedral shape okay and the dipole moment cancel off because this tetrahedral is a very symmetrical shape and there's no net dipole moment. So at the end of it, uh, this molecule is overall nonpolar, okay, which makes it a nonpolar solvent. Okay, just a recap for your chem bonding one. Okay, so let's look at uh, why this compound will be soluble in water. So if you look at the structure, Okay, when water molecule approaches your ionic lattice, what's going to happen is, okay, let me blow up this uh, diagram. I think you can't see it clearly. Okay, let's draw in such a way that oxygen is uh, very near to your sodium plus. Okay, if you think about it, it makes sense because in the water molecule, the bonds are polarized in such a way that oxygen being more electronegative will be having a delta negative charge. And what happens is now you will have uh, again 
forces of attraction between your sodium plus, which is positively charged, and your oxygen, which has a slight negative charge. So we call this iron dipole interaction. Okay, this one is something new. I don't think you all have heard of this term before. So this one is called ion dipole interaction. Or we can call it attraction. Okay, obviously ion refers to your sodium plus and dipole refers to your uh, polarized, uh, polarized bond. Okay, that's uh, coming from the water. Okay, that is a dipole. So I... I can draw it again for your chloride but for chloride it will not be oxygen that's near it it will be your hydrogen uh, atom okay so now you have the delta positive charge instead of the delta negative okay just drawing the other one You can see that it's very important that you use uh, diagrams to represent concept. It's much easier if you can use uh, diagrams to explain certain concepts, especially for ionic compounds. So far, we've been using the ionic lattice to explain its three physical properties. Okay, so what will happen if you have this ion dipole attraction? This ion dipole attraction will compensate for the breaking down of the ionic lattice because ionic lattice they are very strong fossil attraction between the cations and anions so if I'm going to dissolve them this ion dipole interaction must be strong enough to overcome the fossil attraction between your cations and anions so when the ionic compound dissolves in water I can say that this ion dipole attraction is actually stronger than the attraction between the cations and anions Therefore, there are some ionic compounds that will not dissolve because the ion dipole attraction are not strong enough to overcome them. Okay, if you're interested, you can go and find out more examples of that. Okay, next, let's look at conductivity. Okay, this one I think is uh, very easy to explain. You know from your O level that for any compound to conduct electricity, we need to have uh, free ions or free electrons. So, in an ionic lattice, Okay, when it's in a solid state, all the ions are actually uh, in a fixed position within the crystal lattice. So there are no free ions available for them to conduct electricity. However, as you can see, when we melt it down or we dissolve it in water, the ions actually are not rigid anymore in the solid ionic lattice. So when they are not solid, when they are either molten or aqueous, they are free to move, therefore they are able to conduct electricity. So uh, that's the end of video 1. So please go and uh, look at video 2 which we are going to talk about metallic bonding.